Thank you very much, Jasmine. Um, my name is Geisha. I'm an environmental scientist. And um, I've been told I'm not allowed to say this, but I actually just want you all to get out. Not immediately, not now, unless you've realised you're in the wrong place, then maybe now is the time to leave. But um, I want you to get out into nature. I want you to go outside. This is rare coming from an environmental scientist. We spend a lot of time telling people not to go out into nature. People ruin nature. People, no, they wreck the place, right? And environmental scientists tend to have a point. You know, we don't have a great track record as a species with looking after the environment. But that's exactly why I want you to get outside. You see, once you go outside into nature, you learn to appreciate it, you value it, you look after it. And that's what I want you to do. And let's not be perfectly clear, there's something in it for you. Going outside into nature is actually good for you. I know, breaking news, right? <laughs> you, you, you're going to be like, yeah, I knew this. This isn't interesting, Keisha. Why are you telling us this? Well, actually, you see, the thing is, we've all kind of felt that we knew this, but we haven't really had much evidence thereof. So I've been spending a lot of time getting this evidence. So you're welcome. <laughs> and um, getting this, this evidence has basically meant for me that I've spent a lot of time outside, which is great. I spent a lot of time outdoors and, in particular, on the beach. And I got paid for it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I know. I, I think I'm very smart. You think I'm very smart for it. But let me tell you about my brother. Because my brother, who's a social anthropologist, he... Um, did his PhD on the social role and function of the pub in rural Ireland. <laughs> he basically got paid for three years to go drinking. So um, this officially makes me the second smartest person in my family. <laughs> but, but this is not about how smart I am or my brother is or, you know, who my mother prefers. That's completely different. Um, this is about you and me wanting all of you to go outside. Because evidence tells us that going outside is good for us. Going outside, going for a walk by a river, it's good for our mental health. It makes us happy, it makes us relaxed, it makes us calm. The same if we go to a woodland. If we play in a woodland, if we sit in the woodland, we feel more connected and happier with ourselves and with life in general. Going surfing, sailing, swimming, incredibly good for our mental health. It makes us appreciate life, it increases our life satisfaction. So going outside is really, really good, and that's exactly what I want you to do. Now, we obviously also looked at what motivates people to go outside. What motivates people to go outside is the fact that they're going to feel good about it. So let me be your motivator, right? It's important to go outside. You will feel good about it. Just don't go right now. <laughs> we also looked at what it is that might prevent people from going outside. Um, spoiler alert, the weather features heavily. <laughs> right? I know, who knew that apparently, you know, Irish weather is not necessarily conducive to people wanting to go outside, spending time in it. But look, we also looked at what it is that might actually make us go outside and enjoy the outside more. It just takes a little bit of preparation, right? Sounds much more complicated than it is. Going outside, you might want to prepare by, for example, asking a friend to go with you. Easy. You can have a good chat and you'll have a good time. Preparing also means that you might want to consider what it is appropriate to wear while you're outside. In Ireland, this is very important. If you're thinking about going surfing or swimming, right, consider wearing a wetsuit. I don't know if you've been in the Atlantic, it's freezing. Um, and I can vouch for that, I've been in it myself, and I've also tried to make people fill in survey questionnaires after they've been for a swim in the sea, and they can barely hold a pen because they're so cold. <laughs> so, um, it's cold. Now, obviously then there's the wind and the rain. Um, well, it's a very simple answer to this. Bring a raincoat. <laughs> if you're thinking of going for a walk by a river, bring a raincoat. If you're thinking of going for a walk in the woods, bring a raincoat. If you're thinking of going for a walk in the park, bring a raincoat. If you're thinking of going for a walk by the beach, thank you. See, there is hope for you. You're getting the gist of the story. But also let me be perfectly clear. This is an Irish study. And some of this may not actually translate to other places. 
You see, um, I took all this knowledge, everything that I learned about preparing, about going outside, and um, I went to other places, you know, back when we were allowed to do these things. And um, I prepared. I knew where I was going. I was going to the beach. So I wore long pair of trousers. I wore a raincoat. You know, kind of looked at the weather and went, yeah, kind of looks sunny now, but I know this might change any minute. I'm wearing a raincoat. I brought my camera, I brought my binoculars. I was absolutely ready. And, um, you know, I went off to a beach and um, slightly confused, this was in mainland Europe, slightly confused number of signs around, and you kind of realise that they're not as casual about this as we are in Ireland because they'll actually tell you who's allowed to use which beach. If you bring in a dog, you're going to the dog beach. If you bring in a children, you're going to the beach that allows children. If you, you know, have dogs and children, I don't know where you go. But um, <laughs> anyway, off I went, and I had a really good time on the beach in my raincoat because I was prepared. So... Um, in true environmental scientist style, I found a couple of beautiful plants that I had to go and have a look at, which means that as an environmental scientist, I need to get them down on all fours, face the ground. I would demonstrate, I hurt my back, sorry. Um, anyway, as I was enjoying my bit of botanizing, looking at beautiful plants there, definitely felt, you know, endorphins going, feeling really good about this, kind of going, yeah, absolutely, being outside makes me feel really, really good. Next thing, I just heard this boom words, was fällt in nine? If you don't speak German, and this sounds like somebody's really angry, they are, um, <laughs> shouting at me. Well, shouting, and I just kind of froze, you know, that kind of thing of going, oh, I don't want to move. Maybe, maybe they'll go away. If, they, if I don't move, they don't see me. And um, so here I was, crouched down, kind of going, oh, next thing. Two feet in Birkenstocks appeared in front of me, so we're definitely in Germany. And um, I kind of went, okay, I've got to go figure out what's going on because he's still shouting at me. So as I sat up, so, bare shins, bare knees, bare thighs. Well, you know, the whole specimen without closing. And um, when you're down, you know, on the ground, kind of at eye level. <laughs> um, anyway, he was getting all the more hot and bothered, and I was just kind of going, oh, this is terrible. Um, this is how I learned that everything I'd learned about going out to an Ireland does not necessarily translate. Um, wearing a raincoat, bringing a camera, and um, binoculars <laughs> to what was apparently the nudist section of the beach in Germany was not being well prepared. <laughs> but, um, you know, then I am only the second smartest person in my family, so. 